Islamic banking and finance has always uh, instituted, uh, insisted on achieving distributional equity and social justice. In fact, for many participants, this is the main rationale for Islamic banking and finance. Until recently, before the onset of the present credit crunch, a lot of people were arguing that distributional equity can only come from growth and the trickle-down effect from that growth. One need not involve any morality in the business of economics. However, after the credit crunch, people have begun to realize that left to itself, the market will not provide for distributional equity or social justice, which will only result in the enrichment of the few and impoverishment of the many. Therefore, there is now beginning to be a convergence of ideas between Islamic finance, ethical finance, and socially responsible investments. This is a major opportunity for these trends to come together. Indeed, recently, the Pope himself has announced that moral considerations in the management of economies need to be primary rather than as an afterthought. This provides an opportunity for Islamic finance to advance in areas where it was not possible before. And we think that if a proper dialogue takes place between all concerned participants in developing social justice and distributional equity, then Islamic finance will definitely provide a critical pillar to achieve this in the economic management of economies. One of the pillars of Islamic finance is the prohibition of usury. Now, this is not particular to Islam itself. In fact, if one, tradies, uh, if one studies all the Abrahamic traditions in both Judaism and Christianity, usury has been traditionally prohibited. Only in ingenious ways have been found by practitioners over the years to circumvent this basic prohibition of usury, which is at the heart of development of unjust economic systems. And therefore, with the onset of the credit crisis, many people are reviewing this idea. In fact, uh, in the development of credit card debt, we have found that many judges in the UK have also actually ruled against what they have termed usurious rates of interest being charged to people who are trapped by this kind of debt. There is there an emergence of the idea that lending monies on the basis of usury is not the best use made of money. Lending money should be done in a way in which risks and profits and losses are shared. And this is the basis indeed of Islamic finance. Generally in the Abrahamic traditions, usury initially was taken to mean all kinds of interest. However, in the development of Protestantism especially, the Calvinists tried to make a distinction between usury and interest. And therefore, usury became known as what was regarded as excessive amounts of interest and normal interest became acceptable. This is how they managed to circumvent the restriction on usurious lending in the Bible. However, as far as Muslims are concerned, there has been a lot of discussions over the last 40 years on this issue and despite uh, very few dissenting voices, the majority of the Muslim scholars are now of the opinion that any kind of interest constitutes usury or riba in Arabic and therefore is prohibited. And I think at the moment there is near consensus that all kinds of interest need to be forbidden in Islamic finance practices.